Confused. That's the first emotion I felt after I watched this show. Confused how I personally didn't know about it. Confused how nobody saw this amazing show. Confused about who it was actually made for. The last one is pretty easy to answer. It was made for someone like me, your friendly African NPC. To add a little context, Kizazi Moto Generation Fire is a 2023 Disney Plus anthology series made by Africans on Africa and I guess for Africa. But then again, nobody saw this show. Especially not any African I know. Maybe it's because it's an anthology. In my opinion, this works in the show's favor. You get to experience more than one side of Africa. But it's a gamble. You don't get to care for the characters for a long time. And that is to the benefit and detriment of some of the episodes. Stick around till the end to know my personal favorites. But before everything else, how was the actual show? Visually, it's stunning. The show has different animation styles for each episode to visually distinguish each world, setting a different ambiance for each episode. Right off the bat, episode 10 had the weakest animation of the bunch. I don't know what was missing, but the episode lacked in more ways than one. I'll touch on that in a bit. My personal favorite has to be episode 2, but I'm an anime fan so the bias is super real. You can see the care and passion in every frame animated, and it feels great to see these animation styles. It's truly a breath of fresh air to see something different from mainline Disney. Some say it's full of spectacle, and I agree. They had 10 minutes to wow you, and given that limitation, and it being an anthology, I can forgive the lack of deeper visual storytelling in favor of spectacle. Though when they did visually storytell, Oh boy. It's not all bad though. In episode 4 we see a company called Ashcom, which is obviously a parody of Eskom, a South African energy company, which if you know anything about South Africa and their electricity problems, Ash is an appropriate response. The choice of aspect ratio was an interesting one. I don't understand why they wouldn't go for the usual 16 by 9 since it was releasing on Disney+. Plus, It didn't feel like it was an artistic choice, rather a stipulation by the studio. The voice acting was solid. Again, being an anthology, you really didn't get an opportunity to love or hate the performances. But then again, that passion seeped through. Maybe a bit too much. Apparently the Nigerian accent sounded forced. I'm no expert on that end as I'm from the southern part of Africa. But I will point you to Breadhead, a Nigerian creator. He'll give you his two cents on the show. The voice talents I know are Nasty C and Pearl Tusi. Nasty C is one of my favorite South African rappers and he voices Manzo in episode two. Pearl Tusi is Pearl Tusi, bro. If you know, you know. She carried an episode for me, episode nine, and she voices Madi. My favorite performance has to go to Mom Chamba's performance as the receptionist in episode 4. Just pure gold. What did you do? Okay, you're here now, and you're wondering. Okay, it looks good, and sounds good. But what is it about? Well, in a word, Afrofuturism. I'm currently working on an Afrofuturism video. So you might want to subscribe to see that when it drops. Shameless plug. I know. Every episode is set in the same Afrofuturism backdrop. While I'm not the biggest fan of the concept of Afrofuturism, it served the purpose of laying the way for different ways to tell some of these stories. The main themes and messages you'll see across most of these episodes will be centered around coming of age and proving oneself, protection of what's important, your ancestors and your family. family. Of course, other sub themes are there, and some will express themselves more than others, like sacrifice and selfishness in episode 3. 
to feelings of undeserving of forgiveness in episode 6. There's minimal political messaging, but it wouldn't be Disney if they didn't sneak a little bit in. The Great Zimbabwe was never colonized. <gasps> Definitely better than what they are doing at Marvel and Star Wars. As I was watching this show, I rated each episode on a piece of paper next to me. So I thought I'd give you my favorite episodes, my least favorite, the one which was a missed opportunity, the ones that have story potential or series potential, and the objective best. So my favorites were episodes 3, 5, and 8. With episode 3, I was invested in Marim, the main character. I wanted to learn more about the world and the circumstances that led to the story we saw. Episode 5 had something very important to me. Family. I have a complicated family, so there was envy. The old lady reminded me of my grandma, who I haven't seen in years, so longing. The ululating when the knob scans you invoked happiness, because it's usually used in celebration. It was just that kind of episode for me. And episode 8. I'll talk about 8 in a sec. My least favorites have to be 9 and 10. I can't relate to 9 much, even though I can see what's happening, but it's not for me. 10 was a downer and definitely shouldn't have been the last episode. 9 and 10 feel like they were afterthoughts to the whole project, and maybe that's why 10 feels weird. Episode 6 was a missed opportunity. Obviously, Rumbi should have been the main character. And the episodes waste half its runtime on a chase sequence for simple spectacle. You could feel the episode needed 10 more minutes for trimming the fat. Or simply, a better focus. Speaking of 10 more minutes, episodes 3, 4, and 7 have some interesting story potential. Even though 7 is a discount Black Panther Wakanda forever, and Cthulhu is after some surfers in episode 4, both have some potential for stories under the sea. And finally, the best, in my opinion and objectively. Episode 8. To put it simple, it's the perfect anthology story. It tells a complete story and you don't have to guess what happens next. You've already seen it. A complete story, emotional beats of coming of age and choosing one's destiny, sprinkled in with a bit of action. A beautiful end product. I don't want to spoil it for anyone who wants to watch it, so this is all I can say. So back to my confusion. How did I not know about it? Why did nobody see this amazing show? And who was it made for? After some digging and personal experience, it's pretty simple. First off, the fact that Disney Plus isn't available in most of Africa, where the target audience such as myself would see it, doesn't help. Disney, don't make your Disney Plus exclusive African show unavailable to Africans. Just saying. Secondly, the show wasn't marketed well. Not to Africa or anyone outside who may have liked the show. I bet the budget of one episode of She-Hulk could have covered the marketing for the show. But what do I know? And finally, it feels like a portfolio. Like here, this is what we're capable of making. A tech demo if you will. Or some checked box on some exec's desk. Things like THE MESSAGE didn't have space here. Because like I said earlier, they had 10 minutes to wow us, not preach to us. Disney clearly doesn't know what they made here. And we want more than this. Be it African, be it Asian, be it European, be it whatever. I don't care. We just want to see good storytelling. And Kizazi Moto achieved that. Hey guys, it's your friendly African NPC. Thanks for making it to the end of the video. I really appreciate it. Please leave a like to show some love to the channel and consider subscribing. We have more content on the way. Watch this video next. And I'll catch you in the next one, Under the African Sun. Cheers.